Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse with another exciting video. Okay, well if you call creating virtual machines and uh, or master images exciting, then this is the video for you. If not, move on. Basically what I'm going to do today is take you through the steps that I use to create Windows 7 and Windows 10 Gold Master Images in a virtual environment. Now, what we're doing is creating all of these images on the IBM X3650 M3 server that I have. It's one of my lab servers. But the beauty of making these images is once I've made them, I can back them up. I can uh, use Veeam backup and restore to put them in a safe location. Anytime I need to create a new virtual machine, whether it be Windows 7 or Windows 10, I can then uh, wrist, uh, make a copy of that image back to one of my hypervisors, and I have three of them now. I have the Dell production, I have the Dell lab server, which is right behind me, and I have the IBM. So I can move, easily move those images between machines depending on what my needs are. So if that's the kind of thing you're into and you want to see step by step how I do it, then this is the video for you. So uh, I can sit here and babble on all day, but why? Let's go ahead and uh, let's get the video started. All right, so we are logged in to the IBM server. Uh, we already set that up in a previous video, so if you aren't sure how to set that up, go check out my previous video on loading Windows Server 2016 on the IBM X3650. The thing we're going to do today is create our master images, or our gold images. We're going to do one for Windows 7 64-bit. We're going to do one for Windows 10. 64 bit. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have your ISOs copied to a folder. So if I click on my File Explorer and go to my PC, I have two hard drives. <clears throat> I have the RAID 1 array here, which is about 135 gig, and then I have my storage for my virtual machines, which is the SSD. So on the local disk on the C drive, I just created a folder called ISO, and I've copied a couple of ISO files in there. One is Windows 7 Ultimate. And one is uh, Windows 10, current version 1803. Uh, so make sure you have your ISOs at the ready. You're going to need them to create your virtual machines. All right, so the next thing we want to do is go into Hyper-V Manager. And over to the right here, we are going to create a new virtual machine. Now, uh, it's going to bring up a wizard. It's going to walk you through it. It's going to give you some warnings, so read the screen. I'm not going to go over them. Uh, we're going to call this W7U for Windows 7 Ultimate dash G-O-L-D, gold. This is going to be our gold image. Click on next. This is going to be a Gen 1 machine. I suppose you could get Windows 7 to work under Gen 2. I've never tried it. And Microsoft says it's actually for Windows version 8 and above. So for Windows 7, we'll choose Generation 1. Now, I like to use, uh, I like to give my virtual machines 2 gig of memory on the Windows 7. That's usually plenty to get them set up. Since we're going to be using Windows Ultimate, we can also use dynamic memory, but we'll come back to that later. We're not going to check that box for now. Click on Next. Choose our network connection. So we're going to choose that Gigabit 1 virtual network adapter that we created. Going to do Next. And now it's going to create a hard drive, a virtual hard drive. I like to make that about 60 gig. And this is a dynamically expanding virtual hard drive if you read right up here. So it'll only use up as much space as it needs and it'll grow exponentially or dynamically as it needs more hard drive space. Click on next. I always choose install an operating system later. Click on next and then on finish. Then what'll happen is it'll create the virtual machine up here as you can see. Windows 7 U Gold. Now if we right click on that and go to settings, <clears throat> come down to this IDE controller. Oh, first thing we want to do is increase the number of processors, virtual processors to two. I always give my Windows 7 two processors. Then we're going to come down here to IDE controller DVD drive. We're going to select the option for an image file. And then we're going to browse to that ISO folder we created on the C drive. And we're going to choose the Windows 7 Ultimate X64 DVD and open it. Once that's all in there, click on Apply and then OK. 
Now it's very important whatever image you use to or whatever ISO you use for Windows 7 make sure it has Service Pack 1 pre-installed on it. Uh, you can uh, find that out there on, on Microsoft's website. I believe they still have it up there. Uh, if not, uh, let me know in the in the uh, notes section down below and I'll try to put up a link for a, a good Windows 7 uh, 64-bit image with Service Pack 1. Uh, it'll make your life a whole lot easier if you try to install Windows 7 <clears throat> without Service Pack 1 already installed on it. You're going to have lots of problem uh, going out to Windows Update. So make sure you have Windows 7 with Service Pack 1 already installed on it. All right, so we have the virtual machine created, so let's double click on it, which will connect us to it. And we're gonna go ahead and click on the start button. And if all goes well, we should boot off the CD-ROM or the ISO file, and it looks like that's what we're doing. All right, so we're up the Windows 7 install screen. We're gonna choose English, English time and currency, and US keyboard, so click on next. And now we're gonna click on install now. Now this is a Windows 7 Ultimate, however I have modified uh, the E, I think it's EF.CFG file, so that it, in essence all Windows 7 install ISOs and all Windows 10 ISOs have all versions of the operating system on there that you might want to use. As you can see this one includes Home Basic, Home Premium, Professional, and Ultimate. <clears throat> and that is simply a configuration file that you change. I'll put information down in the notes down below on the uh, link to that uh, file. There's an actual file you can just run on your ISO that'll change it from a single install like Professional or Ultimate into a multiple choice install like you see here. We're going to choose Windows 7 Ultimate because we want to take advantage of dynamic memory later. So we choose that and click on Next. Accept the license terms, click on Next. I'm going to do a custom install. And we come out and we see we have disk zero, which is a 60 gig virtual hard drive that we created when we created the virtual machine. Click next. And go ahead and let the install happen. Now this will take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. We'll come back when something changes. So the install is complete. It's gonna reboot. And it should be fairly zippy because this virtual machine is running off of an SSD drive you're going to get much, much better performance if you have an SSD drive or a mirrored set of SSD drives in your server. Uh, it's just a, a better way to do virtual machines. Uh, they're kind of sluggish, uh, especially Windows 7 and a VM. But you put them on an SSD drive and they simply sing. They're very fast. Okay, it's come back up one more time and is completing the installation. Alright, so we're at the next stage of installation, and so we're going to type in a username. I just use Adama, and give the machine a name. I would suggest you name it the same as your image, so W7U-Gold. This really doesn't matter what you name this. It'll be being changed later. Go ahead and type in your super secret password. It's a little hard to do when you get a microphone sitting in front of you but we'll get through it and evidently I hit the caps lock key so let's do that again oh it's gonna be one of those days is it okay I have had cases where I've entered a, had the caps lock on and didn't realize and entered a password came back later and uh, didn't I couldn't log in it was like oh wait so I hit the caps lock and boom it solved the problem okay we're not we're gonna uncheck this automatically activate Windows when I'm online it's up to you to get Windows legal um, but you don't need a product key anymore to install Windows you can simply skip and it'll run in a 30-day trial mode and then uh, you can get your keys and use them uh, for updates I'm gonna tell it to ask me later we want to make sure we set our time zone to central time and click on next and we're on a work network all right it should brought us up to the desktop now now the fun part can begin 
All right, so it looks like it's brought it up. Everything looks like it's working. We can right click on the network icon and we can come here and see what our status is. Make sure we're getting an IP address. We are. We should be able to get out to the internet, etc. So let's try loading Internet Explorer. And this has Internet Explorer 8. All right, so if you come back here to the start button and right click on my computer and go to properties you will see that it's Windows 7 Ultimate Service Pack 1 and it's given us three days till we need to activate alright now the fun part begins now we need to actually load uh, do all the updates for this master for this gold master image now this is going to take some time and the program that I would recommend that you use is the WSUS offline updater uh, where you can go and download all your updates as, as an ISO file I've done a previous video on that I'm not going to show you how to do that here I have that ISO available so I'm going to go ahead and attach that to the Windows 7 machine and then we'll do the updates alright so the other thing I want to tell you is to verify your time and date are correct and they are down here now what we can do is come up here on media and we already have a DV drive, DVD drive in there. We have that Windows, pardon me, that Windows 7 ISO. So we're going to go ahead and eject that. So we go up to media, DV drive, and then eject the Windows 7 CD. Now I put my Windows offline update file, the ISO, in that same ISO folder on my C drive. So let's attach it to this machine. So we go up to media, DVD drive, insert disk gonna to go to our C drive to the ISO folder and there it is right there the WS US offline the W64 W61 which is Windows 7 is actually version 61 of Windows uh, x64 and we're gonna open that it'll automatically ask us if we want to run so we're gonna go ahead and tell it yes and tell it yes now it's warning us that Internet Explorer will need to be installed. It will be automatically installed when we start the updating process. Now normally under Windows 10 we could just go out and we could just attach an ISO but we don't have that ability with Windows 7 so you have to make sure you go up here and actually in insert the media just like if it were a CD-ROM drive. Now so that we're gonna run the WSUS offline updater. I'm running 11.4 and my build is 96 of 2018 so it's got almost all the Windows 7 updates in there that we'll need. Now this is going to be a long process. It could take more than an hour. You just want to keep running this utility over and over again until it tells you no more updates are available. So I'm not going to waste your time and have you sit here and watch this. I'm going to go ahead and click on start to give you an idea. The, the update program will appear sometimes as if it's frozen up. You just need to be patient and let this run and if it tells you reboot and rerun after it's done do that until this thing finally tells you there are no more updates so i'm going to go ahead and let this run and we'll come back when something significant happens so while that's running let's get our windows 10 virtual machine created for our gold image so we're just going to come over here to as you can see the windows 7 update or windows 7 ultimate gold is running it's down here doing its updates we're going to let that run so we'll click on new virtual machine click on next and we're going to call this w10 pro dash gold click on next this is going to be a gen 2 machine now pay close attention to this or you're going to have trouble getting windows 10 to boot i'm going to show you the way i set it up uh, it may not be the proper way according to Microsoft best practices but this is the way I like to set it up click on next we're gonna give this 4 gig of RAM so I give it 4096 we're not going to use dynamic RAM click on next we'll attach our Ethernet adapter click on next we're gonna go ahead and let it create a uh, we're gonna create an 80 gig image or 80 gig uh, hard, virtual hard disk click on next we're going to install an operating system later click on next and finish and then it'll create the virtual machine for you as you can see up here 
Now we need to go change some of the settings so that uh, Windows can install on this virtual machine. So we're going to right click. We're going to go to settings. First thing we're going to do is give this four cores. I like to give my Windows 10 machines four cores. You can do whatever you want. I click on apply. Now the next thing I need to do is add a DVD drive. So we go to the SCSI controller right here. Go to the DVD drive and we're going to add. And this time we're going to select an image file. We're going to browse to our ISO files on the C drive. And we're going to choose our Windows 10 Pro Enterprise Educational 10 1803 image that we downloaded from Microsoft. Click on Open. Click on Apply. Now the next thing you do, need to do is go up here to Security where it says Secure Boot. Disable that. We don't need it for our purposes for our testing. You can do a little research about that. That basically prevents uh, root kits from being installed on your Windows 10 uh, if you need it. I, I don't use it when I'm doing a lab environment. But it's very important if you don't disable that, you could have some problems getting Windows 10 to boot. So click on Apply. And then come up here to Firmware and move your DVD drive. Highlight it here and click on Move Up. Move that to the top. So that's the first thing that this virtual machine will try to boot off of. Click Apply and OK. And <clears throat> now if we right click and go to Connect, we should be able to start this virtual machine and it should boot off of the ISO and we should start our install process. That's good, we got the spinning wheel of death. Alright, just like Windows 7, we'll follow our prompts here. We're going to install now. Alright, as you can see we have a plethora of choices here. We're going to do Windows 10 Pro. That's the one I want to use. Click on Next. It's the X64 edition. You can see when that came out, 619. We're going to accept the license terms. Click on Next. We're going to do a custom install. And then we can see we have our virtual hard drive out there. It's 80 gig. That's one we want to install on. So we click Next. And we let it run. And we'll come back when uh, something significant changes. All right, so the install has, well, partially completed. Now it's rebooted and it's getting everything ready. So we're back at our Windows 7 uh, image that we're creating and you can see it says installation successful. Please reboot your system now and recall update afterwards. You're gonna need to do this multiple times. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart the virtual machine. It's gonna install some updates reboot and once it reboots I'll come up and show you how we run the process again. Alright so we've rebooted our Windows 7. I'm going to go ahead and log back in with our super secret password. Alright once it comes up to the desktop you can go to Windows Explorer. You should still have your ISO image connected just double click on it. Tell it yes to run going to warn you again about Internet Explorer 11 and actually I believe on the second pass it'll actually do the install on this pass of Internet Explorer 11 so we'll click on start yeah and it's doing the Internet Explorer 11 install so you notice there's a window that popped up behind it go ahead and let it install Internet Explorer and we'll come back when something changes all right, so back in our Windows 10 setup screen, you tell it what region you're in, click on yes. Now they've really changed the install uh, setup screen under Windows, 1803, Windows 10 1803, as you will see here. So we're going to tell it yes, we're using a US keyboard. I'm going to skip the detection. So you get this little screen where it tells you it has some important setup to do and uh, eventually it'll change here okay so you have two choices you can set up for personal use but I'm in a domain so I'm gonna set it up for an organization click on next now Microsoft of course wants you to sign in with a Microsoft account 
Uh, but I don't do that. I'm going to come down here and tell it domain join instead. Now, this is where it gets where it's changed. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my login name here. And I'm going to enter my password. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to ask you, after you enter your password twice, it's going to ask you to enter some security questions. So you have a choice of security questions here. So I use my pet's first name. Uh, we'll call it Fluffy. Security question two, the city where I was born. I'm going to say San Antonio. Of course, you need to fill out what applies to you. And what was your childhood nickname? Asshole. Oh, I hope I don't get demonetized for that. YouTube, please forgive me. Heck no, I'm not going to use Cortana. And then I'm turning all of these off. This is part of that, hey, Microsoft doesn't collect data from you, but we do. And I don't need any of these. I don't find any use, including location. I don't want to turn on. If you want to turn on afterwards, fine. I turn them all off. I want, even though there is no such thing as privacy anymore, I want to pretend there is, so I turn those all off. All right, we'll let this run for a couple of minutes and come back when it changes. All right, so back in our Windows 7 virtual machine, uh, we're setting up Internet Explorer 11. It's come up and it's asked us to use the recommended security, privacy, and compatibility settings. So we're going to tell it OK. And then you should be able to close Internet Explorer 11. Come back and it tells you, the automatic updater tells you reboot your system again. And very important, recall update afterwards. So let's keep doing that until something changes. So I'm going to go ahead and reboot this machine. I'm going to rerun the installer and keep running it until we come up to uh, a screen that says all the updates are done. All right, so our Windows screen has finally come up for Windows 10. Welcome to the best Windows ever, yada, yada, yada. Click on close. And we should have Windows 10 up and running now. So if we click on File Explorer, eventually it will come up. We're going to right click on this PC and go to Properties. And you'll see we've got Windows 10, 64 bit, 4 gig of RAM. Should have four CPUs on it. Let's just verify that. Yep, we have four CPUs available to it, etc. All right, so now we want to do the updates to Windows 10. And I'm going to go ahead and use the offline updater, just like I did with Windows 7. All right, so just like I did with Windows 7, I'm going to come up here to Media, and I'm going to eject the uh, Windows 10 install media. And instead, I'm going to insert the uh, Windows offline updater file. And I have that right here for Windows 10. It was also updated on September 6th, so it's currently, it's a recent file. I'm going to click on Open. And then I'm going to click on Run. Give it permission to run. And click on the Start button. And just like we did with Windows 7, we're going to let this run. And once it tells us all the updates are done, then we'll be done uh, running this utility. So you'll need to run this multiple, you may need to run this multiple times. And just keep running it until there's nothing left to do. It'll tell you down here. So we'll let this run and we'll come back when something significant happens. All right, so it appears this is the message we're looking for on our Windows 10 install of the updates. So now it tells you any missing update was either blacklisted or not found. There's nothing to do. It's going to restore the screensaver settings, power scheme, and uh, ending the WSUS offline update. So now the next thing to do is to go to the settings icon here on the start menu and then come down to update and security and make sure there are no additional updates. You need to go through this till all your updates are complete. We'll come back when they're all done. All right, so while the Windows 10 updates are completing, we hope, let's uh, talk about what other items we may want to put on this Windows 10 image. Now, if you're going to be deploying a bunch of Windows 10 units, whether virtually or or whether you're going to sysprep them and store them as an image and deploy them later, uh, keep in mind that if you want to have Office on there, now would be the time to install it. 
uh, things like Google Chrome, any other applications that you're going to distribute. I'm not going to put Office on these. I am going to put Google Chrome on. So after the updates are done, I'll do the Google Chrome install and get that set up. And then we should be ready to sysprep this unit. All right, so this round of updates complete. We'll go ahead and restart. And once we restart, we'll run the update one more time. Well, maybe. Depends on how Microsoft feels today. It may be two more times, but I think it'll be one more time we'll need to run the updates once it reboots and uh, to see if it's complete. Then we can move forward. So looks good. Looks like we've got all our updates in. Let's go out and let's uh, launch Internet Explorer so we can download a proper browser. Well, we can download Chrome. And we'll use our recommended settings. Let's just go get Google Chrome. Download. Accept. Run it. And let it download. Give it permission to run and install. Don't ask me what that noise was. I have a small dog in the chair next to me, and I think he farted into his own mouth. So. Bark. Bark. <laughs> yeah, good one. What's on the tree, boy? Wolf. No, bark. Jeez, he's a stupid dog. I give him that much. Do, 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 do. Thank God for post processing. All right, so it looks like Google Chrome is installed it's up and running uh, we're not going to make it our default browser right now no thank you now I'm just gonna for the sake of being sure I'm gonna reboot this one more time and then we will uh, we'll proceed with the sys prepping so we'll come back to that in just a minute all right so we've uh, rebooted now we got Google Chrome installed let's see if we can actually I think we're ready to sysprep this. Yes, we are. So we're going to go out to Windows Explorer. We're going to go to the C drive. We're going to go to the Windows. System 32. And there should be a folder under there called sysprep. And right there. And then we'll run the actual application. Now what we want to do is enter the out-of-box experience. We want to generalize the system. And we want to choose shutdown. And hopefully this won't throw up any errors. Not like doing it live. Now if you've seen my other videos on sysprepping on Windows 10, you'll see when we've had... Uh, problems with what I was speaking to before like when you go to a 17 when you're on 1709 or 1503 and you do the updates to 1709 uh, it sysprep will no longer work it needs a base install uh, with the with the security updates and not the operating system updates so keep that in mind or your sysprep is not going to work now this is the old school way of preparing Windows 10 machines it works for me it works for my purposes because all I want to do is basically create other virtual machines out of this gold image. But there is a toolkit that you can use specifically for Windows 8 through Windows 10 and even Windows Server 2016 that will help you prep and create images and give you quite a bit more flexibility as to, for example, what you want to install on Windows 10, what you don't want installed, etc. So this is more or less a general tool, old school tool from Windows 7. It just basically prepares the machine for the first use. And then you want to be careful once it shuts down this Windows 10, do not boot this unit back up because it will run through the first install. All right, so it's completed with the sysprep and it's now shut down the system. So now what you need to do is protect this machine, put it in a safe location. You may even want to do a snapshot take a snapshot of it or do a checkpoint uh, it's up to you I'm gonna go ahead and do a checkpoint 
and uh, remember uh, you may want to put some notes in there so I'm just gonna right click on it and go to settings come here to the name and then we'll put another line in there only make copies that's just a little mental note to myself not to boot up that machine ever again just to make copies of it and you'll see where that comes into play when we start uh, redoing our lab so there you go there's windows 10 set up sys prepped ready to go all right so we're back at our windows 7 desktop now let's go get it sys prepped so we'll go to the c drive uh, we will go to Windows, System 32, and we're looking for the SysPrep folder. There it is. And then we run SysPrep, and just like we did on Windows 10, when it comes up here, here we go, it popped up in the background. We want to enter the out-of-box experience and generalize the operating system and shut down when it's done. Go ahead and click OK and watch for if you usually if you've gotten this far, you know, SysPrep is going to work. Uh, it has been known to fail at this point, but it's not very often that I get a failure on on SysPrepping Windows 7. Usually it's Windows 10 that I have the issue on. And here we go. It's shutting down. Now, make sure that you don't run a sysprepped image again until you made a copy of it. <clears throat> and we're going, to, uh, we're going to show you how to do that in the next series of videos, not in this one. Uh, this one was just getting our lab configured with our sysprepped images. So, let me go back into Hyper-V Manager and make sure I label this just like I did in my Windows 10. Let me, uh, in fact, I'll just go out and copy those settings. So I don't have to type them all in again. I will copy on that. Go to the settings on here. Paste them here so everybody knows do not run this machine. It's been sysprepped. Only make copies. Apply. And then I'm going to go ahead and take a checkpoint of this image. So both of these unit, uh, machines are now prepped. Uh, Windows 10 Pro Gold and Windows 7 Gold and we have uh, snapshots or checkpoints of them both. So there you go. A lot of steps involved I know and uh, hopefully I put them in an order that is easy enough to follow if you're if you're trying to do this in your own lab. Now <clears throat> Windows 7 it really doesn't matter. You, you install Windows 7 at least with Service Pack 1 go out and do your offline updates and then do your online updates like I showed you in the video and you should be able to sysprep it with no problems. With Windows 10, I want to be clear. If you're doing a Windows 10 1703 image, you need to install it. You need to install Google Chrome. Don't do any updates and then sysprep it as it is. If you do the updates after 1709, in other words, bump it up to 1803, it's not going to sysprep properly. You also have to make sure if you're going to do 1803 that you download the 1803 image like I did. Uh, just do a search on Windows 10 1803 ISO and it should take you to Microsoft's website and a link to download that Windows 10 1803 ISO. If you follow the steps I did with Windows 10 and just do the updates after it, install Google Chrome and, and for example Office if you want to have an image with Office on it, Follow the steps I went, and you should be able to sysprep it, no problem at all. Let me show you something on uh, Microsoft's page. We'll come over here to Chrome, and here's the link up here. I'll try to put it uh, in the show notes if I can remember. But basically, you can do a, a search the way I did was search on Windows Image Kit, and then you'll come here to the Windows 10 Deployment Tools. <clears throat> now, if you're more more into the deep dive of Windows 10 and how to deploy it, this is the site for you to go to. There are a bunch of tools in the Windows uh, Assessment and Deployment Kit. It's called the ADK and ADK for Windows 10 
uh, but they have deployment imaging service and management tools, user state migration tools. There's all kinds of wonderful stuff out here that you can use to also manage your images with Windows System Image Manager. I have never used any of these programs. They're mainly d directed toward people in the enterprise environment. I'm in the SMB, the small business environment. So the way I do my Windows 10 and Windows 7 images are different than a lot of corporations do them. But if you're in a large corporate environment, this is probably something you want to look into. Uh, it, it allows you to use TFTP, uh, the PXE preboot environment, a lot of tools. So if, you're, if this is your job, your daily driver, in a Windows Enterprise, and I would strongly uh, suggest you look into this tool in order to uh, take care of uh, managing your and uh, creating your images. But again, we're not in the enterprise level. I don't deal with enterprise level customers. I'm too small for that. I deal with small business users, typically anywhere from one to two or 300 employees is probably the biggest I could get. That's about what I can manage. So. This is how I do my images. Your mileage might vary, but I thought it was very helpful to see, for people to see what goes on behind the scenes and what you need to do to get an image up and running. And, and uh, we're gonna do more videos on this. In fact, in our next video on the subject of Windows virtual machines, Windows 7 and Windows 10 virtual machines, we'll show you how to make a copy of that image and how to push it out uh, onto your onto your deployment and uh, make it available to users. So, and contrary to uh, appearances around here, it appears to be a bright sunny day, but it's not. It's actually been raining on and off for the last week, week and a half. And this is the time we get a lot of our rain is September and October, and we're getting a plethora of it this month. So, hey, I love rainy weather, especially around fall. It starts getting me in that Halloween spirit. I don't know about you. Anyway, we hope you found the video entertaining and informative. Please give us a like down below. Leave your comments. I love hearing your comments. So please leave your comments down in the comment section. Anyway, donate if you're so inclined to donate. We take PayPal. We take Patreon. Thanks again for watching. Please come and see us again. we got a lot more exciting videos coming up. A whole bunch of stuff. Getting ready to start our Plex series of videos as well don't forget that and most importantly don't forget that we will see you on the other side